Hi. So I've recently had a viewer contact me. Uh, he's got his own Sega SC3000. And he watched my recent video repairing my Sega SC3000. Um, and he said he's had some issues with his own. We went a little bit back and forth, uh, just trying to diagnose his problem, try to figure out what it was. Uh, his main issue was that he found some scorched transistors on the little RGB or the, the, the composite video board and just was not getting any picture out. Uh, yeah, we went back and forth. He replaced those transistors. We found replacements. And then when he turned on, they just kind of continued scorching and got way too hot to touch and still nothing working. So he asked if I'd like to take a look at it. And I said, yeah, yeah, I would. And here we are. So he sent me this today. Uh, and um, yeah, let's, let's dive into it. Um, looks to be in pretty okay shape. It's a bit banged up, but uh, not the problem. What the problem is, is the video board on the inside. So I've got my uh, video adapter ready to go. I also have uh, here somewhere my 9 volt center negative power supply. But uh, I already know it doesn't work, so what I'm going to do is dive straight to taking it apart. So I should be able to lift this up and out now. Alrighty. So, let's see what he's given us. We've got the keyboard with the mounted pins, which I hate. No matter. Uh, we've got a bag of transistors. So these are the two transistors that he's replaced them with. Alrighty. Uh, we've got the video board disconnected. Um, yeah, it looks like the power connector is out as well, so we should be able to take this board out pretty easily, which I will do now. Cool. Okay, so like I said, this was an issue with the video board here, so let's grab some pliers and bend this. Standoffs out the way. There's one more here. And one down here. There we go. Uh, and yes, you can see here uh, the scorching. Um, yeah, there's a trace missing there, and it looks like he's used the leg from this transistor to just to jump down to reconnect that. So that's actually from one of the photos that I sent this guy. He, um, yeah, these, these legs were all missing, so I made sure to show him where those pins went so that he could repair that. Um, yeah, and that is the, yeah, the transistor there, which is on the board it is marked as, uh, well, actually the marking is gone, but it is, it should be TR106. It's this top one right there. Um, and that is part of the power conversion circuit in this. So this board takes in the 9 volts and it generates uh, through this kind of, it's uh, some kind of feedback transistor, uh, transformer circuit. Um, it generates 12 volts uh, that is fed back into the LM here, I believe, to create the voltage that is needed. Um, but otherwise, it looks like this is in... Decent shape. It fuses together. Okay. Well, let's see what happens when we plug in our board. And let's get our video in here. And our power in here. And Let's see what we get. All right, so we've got nine volts going in. I just got to bridge the uh, the pins to this power switch here, and it immediately draws 1.2 amps. And I can oh yeah, that's no, torching. I don't know if you caught that, but that transistor yeah, it's scorchingly hot, and yeah, it let out a bit of magic smoke. So not good. Something definitely not right there. All right, so that guy's out. So this is a That's the 2001, which was the original transistor that should have been in here, 
uh, according to the book. Wow, that's actually... Look at that. It's actually exploded straight through the board. That is impressive. Oh, and yeah, you can see how scorched it is on the other side as well. Hmm. Not good. So, personal computer, SC3000. And we want to go to the schematic here. And what we're looking for is this little section over here. Board here, this PCB4095. That's this board. Right here, see? 4095. So, area that we're looking for is actually this section down here. So let me zoom in again on that. And we are looking at this connector here, which is the pins coming in. Uh, that takes the 9 volts in here, it goes through TR107 and TR106. TR106 is the one here that's exploded. Uh, and then runs through this transformer coil, uh, which outputs the 12 volts needed for the LM1189. So, uh, and yeah, on the board here it says 2, 2SC2001 for TR106. And TR107 is a 2SC945. So, you can just barely make out, I don't know if it'll actually come through. Try and get the light there. There it is, yeah. That TR106, right, and that scorch mark at the top there. So that's this transistor that we're looking at. And the one on the bottom, there's one that's still in there, is the TR107. So if we bend that back, we can also double check that is also a... Yeah, so that's a C945, that one right there. So that is correct. All right, now let's trim that up. Oh, I went flying. Landed on my shelf. It's impressive. Okay, so let's see. Definitely have some solid connections there. Now, what I'm curious about is on this schematic, the diode ZD101, it's a Zener diode. We also discussed replacing that with a similar part, which is a, I think it's an 11 volt, 11 point something volt reverse bias. And then D101 could be interesting as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check those with my meter. meter in. We'll put it in diode mode. And just make sure that they actually look fine. Yeah. And reverse. Looks good. And this one. Yep, that's a Xena. And reverse also looks good. Okay. Well, anyway, what I'm going to do for now is uh, let's just hook our 9 volts directly up to this. So let's grab a couple of pins. And we're looking at pin 8, which is this one here. Is our nine volts. Just attach a pin directly to that, and pin four and five are our ground, but our four, five is the ground specifically for this circuit. So eight, seven, six, five, four. We want five. Okay, and then we'll hook up our nine volts to that directly. We'll see what we get. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my meter in current limiting mode because at the moment it's set to able, be able to pump out a lot of current and I'm going to put that down to maybe let's put it to 500 milliamps no. okay. ground on the orange one and positive on the red one now let's turn it on and see what happens and it immediately draws 500 milliamps so it's still something wrong Hmm. All right, but let's uh, let's current limit that again a bit more. Need to get a better thingy. Let's drop it way down, 20 milliamps. Immediately goes into current limiting, but what we're going to do now, with such a low current, we can safely probe and let that just sit there and do stuff. Do stuff. So we want to check what we're actually seeing on this transistor. So I'm going to check a uh, ground here and look at the three legs on this one. So we've got nothing. We've got the 
current limited two volts coming out of our supply. Okay, so we do have our, so we've got nine volts coming in on pin, what's this? This will be the, double check. So we've got base collector, uh, no, collector emitter of the base. Uh, emitter, collector, base. Yep, so emitter's on this side. And we do indeed have nine volts coming through on that. Well, not the, sorry, on this. Hmm. So we've got nine volts on the collector, which is correct. So that nine volts should be coming through R. 131 and then R115. So 131 will be this resistor here. So that'll be one of these legs, yep. And then it goes through this current limiting and then into there. But for some reason, that guy's not oscillating like it should be. Hmm. Uh, voice over Nick here. I didn't explain this very well. Uh, what I meant by not oscillating there is that I'm not seeing any voltage coming back on the Zener part or the flyback of this self oscillating circuit. Uh, so with no oscillations, you're not going to see extra voltage. So something's wrong. Anyway, back to the video. I think it's scope time. I want to see if this circuit is actually oscillating. So I will set that up and I'll be back in a minute. Well, um, I think I found the problem and I'm a little bit bummed that I found this while I was off camera uh, setting my scope up because I was just having a quick look at the board and I was just uh, kind of scraping through some stuff and then I noticed, can you spot it yet? Can you spot it yet? That crack right there. And this connects the leg here of uh, C120 to pin 5 of the transformer, which would be a part of the feedback circuit. And if we test in resistance mode between this pin and that pin, which should be a direct trace, we're getting a very large in the mega ohms rating. So I bet if we... Uh, jump of that connection or maybe just I don't know if I should just uh, hook that up yeah I might just do that a little bit of micro soldering there and well what I'll do I'll test this first so I'm just going to use my tweezers here actually I'm just going to wedge that under that pin there and yeah it immediately drops to 10 milliamps and running fine at 9 volts I take it out and it jumps back up so there's the problem right there, that little tiny crack in the board. So I'm just going to quickly repair that and this should just work. It's another day. Um, I've just completed the uh, recapping. All of these capacitors are brand new and popped in there. I've put my little green mark on there to indicate that I've replaced them all just so I can keep track. Um, I've just given it a quick test and it's still working, like it's taking the 9 volt. It's not uh, immediately current sinking, but it's still not uh, generating the 12 volts correctly. So there's got to be something else. Um, you can see the repair that I did up there for the broken trace here um, and I was actually getting into contact with the guy that sent me this and he actually said that and I didn't even I didn't really notice it that much but he noted that the plastics on the case 
had been damaged in the past. And I didn't really take a look at this, but if I noticed on the bottom, these two tabs have actually been broken out and kind of epoxied back in. And when this is in the case, this sits right about there. So that hole that's there is about there. And right below that is where that transformer sits. So that looks like it's taken quite a big hit, but uh, enough to crack the PCB. But what I noticed as well is that if I look on here, this I see right here, it's actually squashed down on that on that side. And if you take another closer look, there is a huge crack in the main board as well. And then you flip it over and that crack extends the whole way through the backboard and breaks all of these traces on the back here, all the way up to the, uh, the back of the IC pin here and it, the crack transmits through a few of those pins as well. So this is going to need some significant trace repair done. Um, yeah, big job. Anyway, uh, for now, I just wanna get this board done, but having seen that, and then coming back to this, I'm guessing that there's some more damage here that I haven't found yet. So let's take a closer look. Now, this is where it would be good to have a really nice microscope, but I don't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way. I'm gonna just beep out the traces. So hopefully we're just gonna, around this area, I'm just gonna pick up, probably on the transformer, pick a thing, find a trace where it goes to, and then just see if it connects, see if we get good resistance between the two. So let's just start right here with pin one. So that's pin one and it traces down to the transistor that we just replaced. And yeah, that, that connects nicely. Okay. Uh, let's go pin two. So that traces down here and it goes to whatever this is. Yep, that looks good. Pin three here just comes straight down to here. That's one end of those diodes. Yep. Pin four up here looks like it goes to ground. And then we'll trace it the other way as well. Ooh, that's a bit dicky. Okay, that's just a bad connection there. Uh, pin five we've already replaced and these ones don't go anywhere. They're just dud connections. So let's go around. Let's try this one here. Yeah, and we'll try it to this pin here. Um, hello, that trace there. What are you seeing there? Oh, yep. Mega ohms across a trace. Right. So we must have a hairline crack in there somewhere. Let's take a. I've got to take my glasses off of this. Let's take a very close look in there. So we're looking at. Let me get a poker. Looking at this trace. Right here. Oh yeah, there is. There's a tiny, tiny little crack right there. It's actually easier to see when I cover the light. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay, so I'm going to scrape this back and bridge those two pins. So what is that? That's well, These are the legs of the diode. So that would actually be why we're not, like, if we're not getting... Where does that come from, actually? That is the inductor. And that comes, yeah, that's L104 there. And that, I think from the schematic comes, that's the filtering circuit and it needs, so it gets the voltage from the thingy that goes through the diode and then it, yeah, filters back through. Um, I mean, it's obviously not good because that's the output path. So the voltage from the output comes directly through this diode and then through the inductor to the output. So if this trace between the output of the transformer through the diode and the inductor is broken, then we, we, yeah, we're not gonna get output voltage. So that makes perfect sense. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape this back um, and jump up probably these two pins and we'll see. Hmm, God, yeah, this, this must have taken a huge hit to have break, broken this much, this many traces. Yeah, you can see the break pretty clearly there. Now that it's, um, yeah, look at that, right, crack straight through. 
Looks like it's almost going into the next trace as well. Mm. Yeah. So this is a uh, fiberglass pen, by the way. I use it for scraping back. Solder resist and whatnot. Um, it's good. Solder masks are not solder resist. Uh, but you just have to be really careful about the particulate that it leaves behind because it's literally fiberglass. So pick it up with a uh, don't just or anything. You have to pick it up with a bit of alcohol so it stays liquid. Um, okay, so let's get a jumper between those two pins. <sighs> boy, oh boy. Let's actually just flood that with solder for now. Mm. Grab my tweezies. Need one of these capacitor legs. I'm just gonna lay it down there like that. Whoops. Ugh, need better tweezers. These ones are a bit bent now. Let's try my fine tips. There we go. Like here. Okay. There we go. And let's trim the lead there. Nice. Trim a bit of that extra solder off as well. Okay. Let's give that a try now. Actually, let me keep buzzing out these leads. Okay, so we were doing that one. We've done that one. What about this one here? Yeah, okay, I think we're good in that area now. Okay, let's give it a try. Give it some Voltaires. All right, we're not drawing current again. Let's see what we see. There's the ground and 11 volts. That might be acceptable. Yeah, 11.1. That may actually be it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yes, 125 kilohertz. Fantastic. I wish I could get that set up for you, but I don't have the... Uh, the camera. <laughs> the other uh, software installed at the moment. But yes, we are seeing the perfect 125 kilohertz oscillation on the transistor, which means that that circuit is actually now pulsing as expected and I call that a repaired board. So yeah, just to recap on the power board here, we had, um, I think we had two dead capacitors when I tested them. So that was uh, this one and that one. That was this one and this one here, they were both dead and they're both in the, um, kind of in the, the money shot as it were. Uh, this is part of the filtering for the, uh, uh, for the power circuit, for the, the step up, and this one up here, the one that I replaced, the little blue one, was actually, uh, that's what was charged by the, uh, the the oscillating circuit in order to trigger TR1062 switch off and do the power stuff. Um, and then, um, yeah, we had a couple of dead traces. So this up here and this one down here were both cracked and we lost continuity and that's what, uh, this one specifically caused the transistor to explode and this one after here, down here, was what made the circuit just stop working after that was repaired, but it was all caused by some physical damage from that crack up there. Um, yeah, that's a bummer, but it's working now. Uh, next step, I guess, is gonna be to take a look at this guy, but that's going to be a significant amount of work. Uh, what I might do in the interim is just, I've pulled my uh, system apart, which is here, because I actually, this is my power board. I just wanted to test a couple of things, so I actually figured out how it would work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this new power board, well, the, user, the, the viewer's power board in my system with my good known motherboard and uh, check that it works. Because if it works here, it'll work in his. So 
So let's pop that in there and gently drop it down. And let's get some video set up. Alrighty, got the board set up, got some power. So let's plug the power in, we're turned off at the moment. And I have the, yeah, I had to there. Where'd it go? Video. So let's plug the video in. And as we covered in my last video, this does not work without a cart in. So let's pop in uh, Champion Boxing. Alrighty, let's make sure we're recording and see what happens. Turn it on, but we don't get signal. Interesting. Oh, and it, it is being current limited because this is actually trying to draw too much. So. Computer stop talking. Oh, it helps if I plug it into the video and not the printer port. Oh dear. It's one of those days. Take two. Champion boxing. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> okay. Let's try the repaired video board now. And let's see what we get. Champion boxing. Look at that. Fantastic. Getting perfect comps of video out. Awesome. Okay. And I should be able to. I um, uh, can't remember what the buttons are. There we go. Level one. Yeah. Jab, jab, jab. Anyway, yes. No, this is working great. So that video board is now repaired. So now I'm going to have to, uh, as noted before, go back to uh, the viewer and um, let them know what I've found about the damage on the main board here, that big crack and the uh, potentially broken, because that's really, really, really squished down. It's like squished and that, yeah, anyway. I wish you had 3D view because you'd be able to see just how wonkus that is. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see what he wants to do about this crack and this repair. Hopefully fix it. And he might want to fix that himself because he seemed like a handy bloke.